Mm. Be careful with hand sanitizer near your violin. It can squirt in the wrong direction. And this can happen. This is exactly what happened to one of my clients. He had a student and he obviously he has the students put on hand sanitizer before the concert but the bottle must have been a bit funny and a drop just squirted across and onto his violin but he didn't realize. So hand sanitizer works with alcohol and violin varnish gets dissolved by alcohol. So it was just sitting there, this gel, this alcohol gel was just sitting there and it removed the varnish. So if you ever need to remove varnish, hand sanitizer, but you shouldn't have to remove varnish. I work with like precious instruments and varnish should never be removed. So I got the instrument here and it's my job to fix it and try and make it disappear. I'm going to give it a good go. It's not the most expensive violin, so I can't spend like a week restoring it uh, like I would if it was a really expensive violin. But I want it to look really good. So, um, but also the violin has this antiquing, like it has these darker marks. So I'm going to have to try and emulate some of those darker marks. Uh, which is harder to do afterwards. So, um, wish me luck. This should be really interesting. Um, yeah, so you can watch me retouch this and make it disappear. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take off the strings. Okay, so I'm going to have to really analyze what kind of varnish this is. So how I can retouch this to make it look authentic uh, when it's finished. Yeah, it's interesting with those darker areas. Uh, it's definitely going to be a little bit tricky. It's not too many, but I'm, I'm going to kind of have to copy them. It's going to be, yeah, it'll be interesting. Anyway, um, I, I just want to get some varnish onto that area. It doesn't need to have much color. It just needs to seal the wood. It's literally, it's taken everything off. Actually, first thing I need to do is um, have a coffee, a sip of coffee. Mm. It's actually a really nice Colombian coffee I'm having at the moment. Thought you might want to know that. All right, I'm going to use a little bit of my 200-year-old varnish formula. I think that could work. Okay, that's it. That's the start. Uh, it's literally going to have to dry for a while now. The good thing is that you don't have to wait here for the varnish to dry, which could take a couple of hours. So I'm going to let you in every time I do the next step on this, um, on this retouching. At the same time, I'm also um, planning the fingerboard on this instrument. But first of all, I just wanted to protect the area um, with the first coat of varnish. I've left this dry a little bit. I'm um, just working back a bit further. And uh, I have put one more coat of clear varnish on there. And you can see how it sort of overlaps over the edges. But also when the um, hand sanitizer dropped on there, it also overlapped a bit. So what I need to do is I need to sand this area very, very finely just to get rid of some of that overlap. So the idea behind this is to really just feather the edges. Yeah, so there's not such a clear overlap. I am going to start mixing a color. Now put some clear varnish over the top. Okay, and now we wait. I've got to let this dry for a bit and then I'll do another coat. And I have to see how the color develops um, because my goal is to make it invisible. Yeah, the color's still a tiny bit too brown. 
I've actually waited a little while, so I might do one more. A lot of uh, retouching here. Let's see how this works. Okay, that's getting a bit closer. It's still a fair way off, but it's already a lot less visible than it was um, a little while ago. But I really, I'm good. I want to let this dry and then I want to take a look at it tomorrow during the daylight and see how it looks in, uh, with, with, in the different light. You've got to be a bit careful with this kind of stuff because, yeah, you want it to be as invisible as possible in, in different light conditions. Now I really am, now I am going to leave it overnight. Uh, I'm done for the day with work and I'll get back to it tomorrow. It's evening now, um, still working on this uh, retouching, just trying to make the uh, that area invisible. It's a tiny bit tricky because the, the original varnish is, it has this really white shine through, like through it. Now I just have to put on some cover varnish, like a clear varnish. I'm, I'm using a, uh, I'm actually using a cover varnish. Okay, so that's done. All right, I'm gonna have to let this dry a little bit now. It's looking a whole lot better. You can still see it a little bit. What's interesting is actually there's a bit of dark just on the edge here. And that's, I think, when that um, hand sanitizer fell on the violin. It must have spread the varnish, the dark varnish, over to the edges. So I'm going to just, I'll probably just scrape that off a little bit just so that it looks clearer. I'm actually quite happy with this. Like, we're very close. The important thing next is to make sure that. Uh, once that's dried, I'm going to do another coat of the cover varnish. And then i just got to make sure that it's totally smooth so you can't see currently. You can still see an indent. I don't know. Yeah, there you go. You can see an indent in the light reflection. And so I've got to get rid of that indent because in the end, what's really important is that you have a totally smooth finish over the whole thing. Now it's not totally invisible and if this was a 10, 20 or 30 thousand dollar violin I would probably spend more time on it but I actually I actually did this really inexpensively so the important thing is that the the spots hidden it looks good um, and like I said, if it was a much more expensive violin, I would spend a whole lot more time on it and really get every tiny little dot matching. But I am running a business and, uh, and I, I can't just keep working on it for hours, hours and hours. I've allocated about one hour of my working time to getting this right and I've probably spent a little bit more but you know I'm also filming this video so that takes a bit of time but uh, yes uh, the colors I've been using for color are my uh, Windsor Newton colors what's important is that all these colors are transparent colors so they go transparent once you put the varnish on them so what I do is I lay down a couple of varnish layers then I lay straight like straight lay down straight the color layer so i mix the color try and get it as close as possible to this and i lay down the color layers and they dry looking a little bit um they, they actually look totally different but then you just put a very thin coat of clear varnish over the top and the proper color shows up but it's it's tricky and then uh, the the really tricky bit is kind of matching it in blending it in right at the end to make sure it, it sort of fits in with the rest of the varnish you can see I incorporated some little dots in there as well. Um, same, you can see all these dots all, all up here, like little dark dots. And I did exactly the same on this area. 
Now I'm going to just scrape off a tiny bit of like where it's darker just around the edges. That's a little bit better. Yeah, I'm going to do one more coat of cover varnish and then I'll let it dry for quite some time. I'm working into the evening. The violin's actually getting picked up tomorrow. So that'll be, uh, that'll be good. Okay, so um, I've waited a little while. I'm going to do a bit of polishing on the rest of the instrument. I have also, um, a bit earlier, I actually planed the fingerboard, but you've seen me plane plenty of fingerboards, so you don't have to watch that again. But um, polishing over the instrument's a good idea. The varnish has an unusual smell. It actually smells like it's got some propolis or something. Uh, it smells like honey. Just got to be really careful. Uh, I don't want to polish too much over the area I've been working on. I kind of need to sand it first. But I just want to go over the rest and uh, just give it a polish. Also, there's a bit more cleaning I have to do here. I'm comfortable to actually sand over this other area as well. So I'll do that. Um... Okay, so uh, I'll just put on another clear coat. I'm going to let that dry some more. Good morning. Okay, so last night I got very close to finishing this retouching. Uh, I sanded it one more time and then added, you can see I added the, the cover varnish over the whole area. So I'm going to do one more sand here and then I'll polish the area and that should be enough to make the whole area look as one. I always use a bit of water on the sandpaper as well. It makes it not quite as harsh. So the next step will be polishing the area. So I'm just going to French polish it and that should just meld the new retouching with the old, the original varnish. Notice that I'm polishing the entire um, top plate. I just want to make sure it all gets blended in really nicely. I mean, I can still see where the area was a little bit, but uh, it definitely is a whole lot better. So it's looking, I'm really happy with that. So the area, the spot is just here. You can see it a tiny little bit, but I, like I said, it's, I've literally, I'm charging for one hour's work on this job when I've already probably taken a bit more than that. Well, definitely, because, you know, the on and off, you've got to restart and things like that. Just got to be careful. I don't want to wipe off any of the work. Okay, so I'm going to let that dry some more now. And then uh, I will get back to it later. Okay, so this has uh, dried a bit. Um, I will just sand it one more time. And I'll polish over it again. And after that, I'm gonna let it dry and put the strings on, yay. That just needs to dry and then I can put the strings on. Okay, it's time to put the strings on. I'm actually happy with this. I just realized I have to lower the nut a tiny bit as well. Now I can put the pegs back in. Okay, I can go over to the shop now and try the instrument and make sure that everything's working fine. Sound 
otherwise it's good. Uh, I'm happy. I'm happy with the retouching. Uh, you can see there's a slight discoloration, but, but the general picture of the varnish is one of a whole violin again, uh, which is so much better than having that big, like light chunk of varnish missing. Anyway, now I've just got to wait for the player to come and pick up his instrument and see what he thinks. Yeah, come on in. Hey, how are you going? <laughs> so it's looking, looking quite a lot better. Mm. It's not fully gone, but it's mostly gone. Anyway, um, do you want to use some hand sanitizer? Uh, <laughs> you know, maybe you can put the hand sanitizer outside the oh, room just as they yeah, walk in. Yeah. So yeah, make sure you keep the hand sanitizer far away from the instrument. Um, like I said, the the tip, like the hands, the, the sanitizer can dry up at the tip and then it'll squirt in all sorts of directions. I've actually squirted myself in the face once when uh, when I used dried up, yeah, hand sanitizer. <laughs> Not so good. Anyway, um, there you go. That kind of stuff can be repaired, uh, can be made to look a lot better again. Um, if it's a really valuable instrument, you can pretty much make it fully disappear. So if you like this video, hit the like, subscribe, and hit the little bell so you know next time I publish a video. Keep making beautiful music, and I will see you guys next time. And stay away from hand sanitizer! You're probably wondering how I did the hand sanitizer on the violin and I promise you it didn't get harmed. What I did is I got one of my own instruments and I covered the surface with oil so that the hand sanitizer wouldn't have an effect like it would cause it, create a barrier between the hand sanitizer and the varnish and then I squirted it on. I'll show you the violin still okay. So no instruments were harmed during the making of this video, however, when you put hand sanitizer on your instrument, it does harm your varnish.